joy or happiness, success or failure, peace or dismay. The foundations of our life rest on the words we receive. A word of hope and guidance, translated from the Temple of Solomon in Brazil. You are listening to a word of faith with Bishop Macedo. Hello, my friends. God bless all of you, especially you who are up early, be it to work or to pray or seek the Most High. Be blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus. Look, I have here a message from my Father to you. A message from my Father to you. This is the word which God, the Holy Spirit, gave me to share with you. It's trust. Trust. <laughs> One thing is for you to have faith, to take possession of blessings. Another is for you to trust, for you to maintain the possession of the blessings. So they are different. See, King Solomon said, in his Proverbs he said, in the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence. In the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence. Meaning those who fear the Lord, they trust. They live trusting in the Lord they believe in. In the fear of the Lord, there is a strong confidence. And He, the Lord, and His children will have a place of refuge. So, my friend, I would like you to understand what trust means because faith you know what it is faith everyone has to take possession of everything you remember that jesus healed 10 lepers the 10 lepers had faith to be healed but only one had faith or trust to maintain his faith. <laughs> Very interesting. See, what does faith mean? Faith is like the beginning. You know when an airplane is taking off, so he is using, we can say, the expression of faith. The plane takes off. But up there, comes trust, meaning maintaining oneself at the top until they reach their destination. They call it cruise mode or autopilot to follow until the final destination. As is with trust, many people who obviously do not have the Holy Spirit, do not comprehend well these things. Those who have the Holy Spirit have discernment to understand what is faith and what is trust. So when a person is focused on the blessings, remember what Jesus said, we spoke about this. Jesus said, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Everything. What would you like? Oh, I want this, I want that. All right, but first the kingdom of God. So, by faith, you conquer the kingdom of God and live in His righteousness, His character, His truth, a 
man of one wife, a wife of one husband, loyalty and fidelity. which are virtues of those who take possession of blessings and above all the kingdom of God. Above all the kingdom of God. A person takes possession of the kingdom of God by faith and by faith he obeys the word of God. It's righteousness. He walks in righteousness. Now, in trust, he awaits and hopes that things will be added on to their lives day after day after day or week after week or month after month, year after year. And as an example, I want to say to you that I received the baptism with the Holy Spirit. I had my encounter with the Lord Jesus. I received the Spirit of God when I was 19 years of age. Only 19 years of age. What was my biggest dream from that moment onwards? To win souls. I did not want anything else. I put all my strength, all my heart to win souls. But, you know, young, 19 years of age, single, needing a helper to help me reach my objectives, which were souls. Look, do you know when I really saw myself free in this world, free from secular work, free from my personal dreams, free from this world and started to do exactly what I dreamed and planned, what I had in my being, my heart. Do you know when it was? When I was 32 years of age, meaning from 19 until the age of 32, it was 13 years of waiting, of trusting, but I had already entered the kingdom of God with the age of 19. After I was baptized with the Holy Spirit, after then, I was polished or I was chiseled, cut, better saying. God started to chisel me, to cut. I went through difficulties many challenges. I never faced hunger. Praise to my God, my Father, who even before me already guarded and kept me. Never went through hunger, but, but, I came across many difficulties ahead. After I got married, my problems, we can say financial problems, duplicated because it was no longer one, it was now two people. So, after the daughters came, it quadrupled because it was no longer Esther and I. Esther, I and the daughters. Then came Moses, so five times. But already we were already going well. But in this period, in this period, until the age of 32, we maintained our trust. We kept the hope alive that one day we would win souls, that we would work solely for Jesus, no one else. I wouldn't work for men. I wouldn't work for myself. I wouldn't work for my family. I would work to serve my Lord. So this took 13 long years. 13 long years. In these 13 long years was the period of trust. Because in the church where I started, 
I did not have, we can say, this faith which today we have, which we know, this aggressive faith, this faith of total sacrifice, this faith of going after and taking possession of what was promised. No. We had faith to conquer the kingdom of God and His righteousness. I conquered more to maintain the kingdom of God in me and His righteousness and walk in His righteousness according to His rules. I needed to trust. And that's where Solomon, guided by the Holy Spirit, he writes, in the fear of the Lord, meaning those who are in the fear of the Lord and they they fear God and they flee from sin. They are not in a rush. Those who fear the Lord are not anxious. In the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence. In the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence. And this confidence, my friend, is extremely important to maintain our faith because to conquer is not difficult. You see that sinners conquer. Sinners conquer easily their success. A thief conquers easily. Be what is of other people because it's easy to rob from others. But see the rest of the life of a thief. Go see the remaining lifestyle of a fraudster. Go and see the life of a corrupt and the corrupt. When they are near death, you'll see them suffering horrors because they're going to cross over into the world of the dead as the Egyptians say not knowing what is waiting for them so those who do not live in the fear of the Lord do not know they don't know what comes after death they have no perspective or even hope But those who fear the Lord affirm this confidence. And it's like this, my friend. You did your job. For example, you who are up late. Here it is 10 past 7. There it's 10 past 3 in Brazil in the morning. You prayed up late. You have wept, you have sacrificed your will, your dreams, your sleep. How precious sleep is. Sleep is like a delicious plate. And you interrupt your dream to seek the Lord. You are sacrificing. But why are you sacrificing? Because you have faith. That's faith. However, this happens to many. They conquer. But after they conquer, they forget. After they conquer, they relax. And then, that's when the danger comes. Because one thing is for you to have faith to conquer. Another is to have faith to maintain our faith, which is trust. So when a person is God-fearing, in that person there is this trust, this confidence. First because they feared the Lord, because they had an experience with God, so they feared the Lord. So it's the manifestation of faith. But, why is there fear? Because that person trusts. And that trust 
is there because there is confidence. The fear of the Lord brings this confidence and He, God, will be a refuge, a stronghold for His children, those who fear Him. So you who are sacrificing, fasting, waking up late, weeping, even if shortly you're going to have to leave your house, go to work, perhaps one more hour, two hours, then you have to leave, go to work. I remember that how was my life. We needed to get up early, go to work, later we would go to school, study at night, go back home, every single day that routine. But I knew in whom I was trusting in. I knew in whom I was believing in. And that one day, sooner or later, I would not die before seeing that dream of mine coming true. And today, I have the biggest pleasure. For me, it's not a job to preach the gospel. I don't believe that someone can consider the preaching of the gospel a job. This is to serve the Lord, to serve the table of the Lord, to preach the gospel. It's as if Jesus was seated at the table and I would come to serve Him with the best. That's what I understand. It's a pleasure I don't do this for my financial needs or for personal success or any objective. No, I do this with pleasure because I love to serve my Lord. And I don't see any other better way to honor my Lord than to win souls, sustaining souls. Remember what Jesus said to Peter. Peter asked, If you love me, Three times. Jesus answered and said, Take care of my sheep. And that's what I have been trying to do through these lives daily. And I do it with much pleasure, much pleasure. It's not favor, it's not an obligation. It's a pleasure. It's joy. The more I teach, the more I transfer to the interested that which God gave me, happier I feel, more fulfilled I feel. So, my friend, do not be discouraged. Go ahead. Sooner or later you will see the fruit of your work. As the psalmist says, he who walks out walking, crying while he plants, which is your case, you are sowing with tears. We sow with tears. He says, later they shall return with joy. So that's how it works. If you sacrifice for the Lord, to the Lord, for His glory, not for your glory, then you can be sure that you will return with joy in your soul for the fruit which you reap. And that's what we want. So I sit here to do this live and the Holy Spirit gave me this word, fear, fear, better, trust, trust, trust. I remember a song which we used to sing back then, which says, God will give me the victory. I know. God will give me the victory. I know. If I walk in His light, 
trusting only in Jesus, God will give me the victory. I know. You who are the silver of the house, you would remember the song we used to sing back then. That's the victory in God. Trust. One thing is to have faith to be healed. Another thing is to have faith to maintain the healing, which is trust. One thing is for you to have faith. Another is to trust. And difficult, more difficult is to trust than to have faith. Because to have faith, everybody has. Quickly, people receive blessings. People fulfill their dreams. But many end up losing everything because they despise their trust. They despise their trust. They despise their fear with God. And they lose everything as well. They go back to the trash can. That's the reality. So my friend, if you are this person who is persevering, look, God is so marvelous, so good, that He does not give us what we want. He gives us what we need. And many, peop- many times I ask, but come on God, I could have started preaching the gospel with 19 years of age. Why did I have to wait 13 years? But I had no spiritual structure, no spiritual maturity. I had no spiritual knowledge. I had no spiritual discernment. So God does not give us what we want in the moment we want. No. He gives us what we need what we're in need of. That's how he works. You don't give to your child what he asks. You give what he or she needs. Is that not how it works? Very well. And still, they stumble. So when we take possession of the blessings by faith, that's marvelous. It's simple. It's easy. You believe that I can do this. The blind said, yes, I believe. So be healed right now. Do you believe? Yes, I do. So receive the blessing. That's easy. Now difficult is to maintain that faith, maintain that trust, which did not happen to the nine lepers, the remainder, because they were healed, they had faith, but they turned their back and take care of their own lives. But there was one who returned to thank the Lord Jesus. This one had faith to maintain his faith, meaning he trusted in order to maintain himself in the way of the Most High. And that's why Jesus answered, Go, your faith has saved you. He didn't say your faith has healed you. He said, Go, your faith has saved you. So one thing is for you to have faith, to take possession of blessings, the promises of God. Another is for you to have faith, to maintain yourself in faith until the Lord comes to contemplate you with the eternal blessings. God bless you in the name of Jesus and until tomorrow. Until tomorrow.